Law and Order Statistical Victims Unit, Episode 3, Research Paradigms. In the original research system, statistically based investigations are considered especially heinous. In Houston, Texas, the dedicated scholars who investigate these vicious problems are members of an elite squad known as the Statistical Victims Unit, aka DSP. These are their stories. Okay, so in any investigation, there is gathering evidence. In actual law and order, investigators must decide on what methods they will use to gather evidence. Eyewitness accounts, crime scene investigation, DNA testing, etc. They're probably going to use a combination. The same thing with statistical studies. Here, though, researchers must de decide what methods will be used to gather evidence, which is the same thing as collecting their data. And so um, the different types are quantitative methods, qualitative methods, or mixed methods. So what is a research paradigm? That's what we're talking about today. So what is one? A, a perspective based on a, num a set of assumptions, concepts, values, and practices that are held by a community of researchers. So we're going to explore those. All right, one major research paradigm or approach, if, you, if that's easier for you to conceptualize it as a research approach, is quantitative. Quantitative research relies on the collection of quantitative or numerical data. Okay, so with quantitative research, you're measuring things um, and you're recording the numbers. So here we've got a, a scientist pipetting something. She's going to measure something about whatever that is she's working with. Qualitative research relies on the collection of qualitative, non-numerical data. Just like this is a historical researcher looking through some, some municipal records, getting information, I believe, on the ages of maybe some bridges. Um, but looking at descriptions of bridges, looking at the, the year when they were uh, created, qualitative, non-numerical data. Mixed methods is a combination of the other two, and that's what many of you will do. There's going to be a quantitative aspect to your research and a qualitative aspect to your research. And don't get confused. Sometimes people think, well, if I'm doing qualitative research, I can't do statistical analysis. No, you can, and we'll talk about that a little bit uh, later. So both types of research uh, employ part of the scientific method. For quantitative research, typically you're doing deductive top-down um, investigation and, and typically you're testing hypotheses here so for instance um, deductive reasoning just so you can wrap your brain around it it starts with a general principle and then applies it to a specific case so like our, our little picture here monkeys like bananas Lucy is a monkey therefore Lucy likes bananas that is deductive reasoning think Sherlock Holmes Qualitative research is more inductive. It's bottom up. It's typically hypothesis generating. So if you notice that every crow that you see is black, then you can come up with a hypothesis. You generate a hypothesis that all crows are black. So we have kind of a research cycle here. And so um, once you have general principles, then you use deductive reasoning and you see if it applies to specific cases. You test the hypothesis with specific cases and you may confirm your hypothesis. You may notice other patterns um, in the data that you're looking at, which then you would employ inductive reasoning with and, and hypothesize a new general principle, which then you can conduct a hypothesis test and look at a new set of specific instances and see if that hypothesis is concerned. This is referred to as the research cycle. View of human behavior. Quantitative and qualitative uh, research have slightly different views of human behavior. For quantitative research, the take is that behavior is regular and predictable. So people, when they go to the movies, um, will tend to eat popcorn more so than it go into other things. People don't go to church and typically buy you know, a bag of popcorn or to live theater and buy a bag of popcorn. But there's lots of people, even if they've just had a meal, they'll go and get a bag of popcorn when they go to the movie because it's such a habit. It's so predictable. They even um, have done studies. Uh, in fact, the source where I got this uh, picture from had done a study where people will eat much more stale popcorn while watching a movie than they will in any other setting. So that's kind of interesting that human behavior is so regular and predictable in that context. Morning cups of coffee. 
many people, you know, you can just count on one thing that they're going to open. If they open their eyes in the morning, then they're going to be getting a cup of coffee um, really soon. Or if you're Miss Stewart, a glass and green um, iced tea. All right. Qualitative research, however, has more of a, a viewpoint that behavior is fluid, dynamic, situational, so, social, contextual, and personal. Um, so here I've got a picture of a, a little postman screaming, that famous scream um, picture has been parodied here. And that represents the idea that pretty much anybody can go postal given the right social situation and um, context, enough stress, enough um, influence from the outside that's negative, any person could go postal and you can't predict when. It's unpredictable who will and it's unpredictable when they will. Um, it's, it's just such a dynamic si system that influences that behavior. It's not as predictable as people who um, tend to have a quantitative framework would believe. Now, the, the lines between these things are not hard and fast all the time. Okay, The difference between quantitative and qualitative variables, quantitative and qualitative data, is fairly hard and fast. I mean, there, there, there is numerical data and there are um, non-numerical data, categories, that sort of thing, descriptors. Um, you can force qualitative data, however, to have a numerical value and you can take numerical values and you can categorize them. So even there, where the lines are the clearest, there's some crossover. So don't get hung up on, but you know, special cases that seem to blur the lines, that that is true, okay? That's why there's mixed methods research that kind of reconciles those differences. Okay, so let's talk about the most common research objectives in the two camps. For quantitative research, description, explanation, prediction, modeling what you have, that is the, the those are the major research goals. So here we've got height and weight and both numerical quantitative data and um, looking at the relationship between the two and then coming up with the least gross regression model so that predictions can be made. If we know somebody is 52 inches tall, we can predict what their weight would likely be. Now, another thing with statistics is realizing that there's a margin of error. As you can see, the line kind of summarizes what's going on, but it doesn't hit. It hits maybe one data value right here. The rest, there's a little bit of error. Okay, that's one of the things you have to bring into statistical analysis is understanding that there, there's going to be a margin of error. There's kind of a saying that statistics means never having to say you're certain. Um, you always get to hedge what you're saying with, with a margin of error. Qualitative research still is about uh, description, but it's also about exploration and discovery, figuring out, looking for patterns. Once you have them, then you might go back and do further quantitative research to verify that the patterns you think are there actually do exist. Okay, so now let's talk about the focus of the two types of um, camps of research here. Quantitative research, you've got a narrow angle lens. You're testing specific hypotheses. It's gonna, you're going to be seeing if one particular effect is there. Okay, and so it's almost like you're looking through a microscope. Your 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 scope of vision is going to get very very narrow. For qualitative research, you're using a wide angle, or maybe even think of it like a deep angle lens, um, examining the breadth and depth of phenomena to learn more about them. You want to know the full scope, and then you want to know the whys. You want to know all the color and texture and everything that's involved in a particular phenomenon. Um, right here, what you're looking at is an aerial photo of New York City. Um, I thought that was really pretty cool. That is like from a super wide angle lens. Actually, it's several panoramic pictures put together. So I, I thought that was really cool. So you're getting a big overview of, of New York City. That's what qualitative research can do. It can either be a big overview or it can be really going into depth where you, there's lots of interviews in, in a specific case study. So um, the next thing we're going to talk about is nature of observation. In quantitative research, because it's such a narrow lens and you're really trying to have hard evidence that something's there or not, you attempt to study one little particular behavior under very controlled conditions. So here we've got um, a picture of um, a monkey in a laboratory situation and the people in this uh, that were conducting this research were attempting to demonstrate that monkeys have a sense of self-awareness because they show that they recognize themselves in mirrors. 
okay? So in the wild, you know, you might see a monkey looking at itself in a river or a pond or something, but, but they're not going to have mirrors out in the, the wild, you know, just checking themselves out. So this is very much a contrived situation, and it's very controlled. Um, and so, you know, when people are doing research like this, they provide monkeys with the same kind of mirror, hopefully safety proof. That one looks pretty safe there that it, the monkey's not going to shatter it and hurt himself or herself. Um, and so that that is what quantitative research then it tries to control for any other variables and just isolate the one behavior or the one relationship that's being examined for qualitative research remember this is more your hypothesis generating you're looking for patterns you're trying to see what exists and to describe completely a phenomenon um, so for qualitative research, this is when people study behavior in natural environments, the context in which the behavior occurs. So here I have a picture of Jane Goodall, who's very famous for studying chimpanzees in their natural environment and just really looking and seeing what kind of behavior is typical among chimpanzees in the wild. So now we're going to move on to nature of reality and quantitative and qualitative research have two different kinds of natures of reality or aspects of reality that um, they upon which they focus for quantitative research um, the nature of reality is taken to be objective different observers agree on what is observed so here we've got a little cocker spaniel puppy how cute is that being weighed and if my eyes serve me correctly, this little guy or girl weighs nine and a half ounces. And everybody who can look at this and see how much this little puppy weighs, as long as that is a cor the instrument is well adjusted and calibrated, everyone would agree that puppy weighs nine and a half ounces. No argument there. Somebody might use different um, units, but it would be an equal amount of weight. Qualitative research is subjective, personal, and socially constructed, much like trying to pick winners of a toddler beauty pageant. Um, there, there are no objective criteria there. I don't even know how people would begin to tell which of these little girls is more beautiful than the other. They're all precious, all unfortunately really over made up in my subjective personal opinion, but um, certainly you're not going to get a bunch of scientists to agree that one little girl is more beautiful than the other little girl. That's subjective, it's personal, and it's socially constructed. Okay, so forms of data collected, again, are going to be different. For quantitative research, you're going to collect quantitative data. That makes sense. Based on precise measurements. So here we've got, it's actually an elementary school teacher from her blog site, um, a bean plant that the class is growing and she's showing evidence by precisely measuring the, the height of the bean plant that the bean plant is now taller than it was previously. Qualitative research, however, collects you guessed it, qualitative data, observations, field notes, open-ended questions. So here we have, I believe, again, if my eyesight serves me well and memory serves me well, um, we've got field notes of somebody who's observing birds in nature. And so um, for field notes, you're just writing down what you observe, what you see, keeping track of it. The nature of the data for quantitative is obviously quantitative. You've got measurements, numerical values for variables. So here we've got delivery time in minutes, perfect example of a numerical um, set of data. Qualitative research, you've got words, images, categories. Um, so here we've got some sort of density cube experiment and qualitative data for it. So for each cube, people were to describe what the what the touch is, so slightly rough, heavy, what they see, it was apparently a red or brown cube, and the smell was metallic. Okay, number two was smooth and light, it was silver, it was metallic. So that that is a great example of three different qualitative variables and the descriptors that come with them. Now, just so you know, you can do statistical analysis on these. What you would do is you would look at the frequency or relative frequency percent of each of the different occurrences. So if we wanted to know uh, the cubes, we wanted to describe what's going on with, with touch, 30%, oh, actually, let me back off on that, 20% uh, were slightly rough and heavy, 10% were slightly rough but light, and 70% were smooth and light. So that is how you can bring statistics in, is, is in the summary of the qualitative measures. 
So with the data analysis, again, um, you're going to have a little bit of a, a different approach here. For quantitative research, you identify quantitative statistical relationships. And so I put back up the uh, height and weight scatter plot there with the least squares regression line. That is a perfect example of, of what you do with quantitative research. It's not always looking at two variables together. You can look at a single variable isolated by itself. You can look at nonlinear relationships. There's all kinds of things we can do. For qualitative research, you're, you're searching for patterns, themes, and holistic features. Now, we can look and compare um, distributions of categories for two different groups or compare one group with some set standard. There's a lot of things we can do with qualitative research to study it statistically. Um, here I've got, uh, I thought this was really interesting. Um, these are four very common um, personalities if you will, roles that people find in different offices. And I thought that was extremely interesting that looking at just a lot of data, looking at the nature of the relationships and personalities in different offices, people were able to come up with um, a set of roles. They actually had nine, but they only had four with cool um, pictures. So that's why there's only four of them. But here we've got the attacker, the colleague who repeatedly expresses anger and frustration in the form of inappropriate personal criticism. The manipulator, the coworker who attempts to influence your, your attitude or behavior through deception or secrecy. The slacker, the coworker whose poor performance damages your performance. That's not fun. The bully, a colleague who uses unreasonable demands and inappropriate threats to get her way. So you may have noticed these personalities in um, group work that you've done. Um, the, the good news is you're not alone. The bad news is, yeah, it's among adults too. So there you go. But qualitative research looks for things like that, looks for patterns. All right, for quantitative research, when we're talking results, which is what we're going to talk about next, you typically are going to have generalizable findings. That's the whole thing. You're either wanting to be able to generalize what you see from your sample to a whole population, or you're trying to establish some sort of cause and effect relationship. And so typically you're taking from your population a sample and then hoping to make inference back to the population. To an extent, um, there are some qualitative studies that can do that. But with qualitative studies, um, even though you can do generalizable findings sometimes, sometimes it's not going to be generalizable. Sometimes, frequently in fact, it's going to be particularistic findings. They may represent the view of an insider or present multiple perspectives. You know, a case study is an example of qualitative research where you just really go in and look at that one case and describe it thoroughly. Well, you're not going to be able to generalize that to anything other than that case. That doesn't mean it's not worth studying. You can gain great insight by looking at a case study. It just means that your scope of generalization is limited. So here I found online this um, qualitative research for a zinc treatment program in Nepal. How specific is that? But it's awesome. That's great. I'm sure the people in Nepal needed the zinc and um, are happy that somebody studied, you know, zinc treatment in Nepal. For quantitative research, um, typically the form of the final presentation is a statistical report in, in writing and then perhaps some sort of presentation. For qualitative research, it's going to be a little more narrative. Like I said, there's some statistical analysis you can do, but the report's going to be more narrative uh, with contextual description and direct quotation from research participants. And, and like I say, statistical report as appropriate. Then again, back with the quantitative research, sometimes there's some narrative um, reporting that needs to be done too. Like I said, the lines are not hard and fast here. Which brings us to mixed methods, which is what most of you are going to do. It's a study in which there is at least one quantitative component and at least one qualitative component. Some data are numerical and some data are non-numerical. You may be able to do statistical tests over everything, or you may be able to do it over all of the quantitative um, components, one of the qualitative components, and then some of the qualitative components won't be appropriate for statistical analysis, and that's okay. So here we've got, we've got, uh, I love this picture. Um, so we've got the the qualitative side here and then the quantitative side here. And together they present a more complete picture of what's actually going on in this sample and, and then the population being studied. Okay, guys, if you have any questions over this, please let me know. Be thinking about your hypotheses and which ones um, 
will require a quantitative approach and which ones will apply will apply will require a qualitative approach okay that's it for this one here's my con my content source um, a great book on educational research and then all my image sources there's a bunch of them all right guys have a great day